Hey what's up guys, I'm Nasio Cole and today I'm going to be doing a video on Stargirl. And now originally this video was going to be very different, it was going to be a review on the entire series, on, on the entire season, and uh, yeah I kind of didn't realize that the finale was a two-parter, so uh, I'm really just in this video I'm going to be talking about season one, my thoughts about it, about Stargirl in general, and I'll probably make a video when the series finale comes out next week as well. But before we get started, of course I have to tell you major, major spoilers for the entire Stargirl series so if you don't want to be spoiled then go and watch that series first watch all of Stargirl get caught up and then come back to this video so first things first coming into the show I would say that she's really really optimistic she's really eager to use her powers and is kind of throwing caution to the wind but you know she's a 15 year old girl who just got superpowers who just got a cosmic staff that allows her to fly I mean who wouldn't I mean even if you are just a random person not even a kid but a random person who wouldn't want to just go crazy with it going into this I thought this would be your typical high school drama with standard tropes and while there definitely are there they're not as eye rolly and over the top as other shows tend to be and they don't really spend a lot of time on them they're just kind of there to be there to set the world they're in high school right I think this is probably one of the better DC shows since the season is basically over as far as the first season goes this is in my top three of first seasons. The writing in the show is top notch and a lot better than some of DC's other recent work. As far as the whole new Justice Society, I really really like it. I really like Beth and Yolanda. At the start, Rick kind of felt like that stereotypical angsty teenager. And I guess you could say that's exactly how someone would react finding out that your dad's death wasn't actually an accident and he was a superhero but now you're a superhero and he was killed by this big monster. So, you know, I can tell you he's a little bit angry, but I'm really glad, honestly, that they didn't dwell on that for too long because it just felt really unnatural. You know, obviously, if something bad happens, you're going to be upset or if some, somebody does something bad to you, somebody lies to you, you're going to be upset. But let's take season four of Arrow, uh, for example. Felicity just gets pissed at Oliver for not telling her that he has a kid, but I mean, she knows Oliver. She At that point, she had known Oliver for the past four years. You know what I'm saying? I, I get that, you know, obviously that's a big thing that you have a kid, but when, in Oliver's mind, it was out of sight, out of mind, you know, like he wasn't thinking about that. And then Damien Dark brought it up and now it was this whole problem. And then she was like, you know what? I can't be with you. I just, I don't know. I felt like that was really, really, that was like my, one of my least favorite moments in any DC show. I just really don't like when they dwell on anger for long periods of time. And in this show, I mean, obviously he had a right to be mad, you know, his dad's dead, but he grew and he didn't necessarily move past it, but but you could definitely see the growth in him. It, it's good to have someone who's finally, you know, just able to just like trust the process. You know, he was upset. You could tell he was upset, but he was like, okay. Like when Pat wanted him to stay behind instead of going out on the field, I think he was like, but I wanna, okay, whatever, I'll, I'll do this. I'll solve my dad's code, you know? So he was upset, but understanding. But of course, a show can only be as great as the villain, and the villain f is the Injustice Society of America. And I think they do a really, really good job. And if you guys have watched the most recent episode, which if not, then I guess, you know, it's a spoiler, but it's not like a huge, huge thing. Uh, their plan is to reprogram all of America, or, or like I think one third of America, and make them like renewable energy, which, you know, like, <laughs> it was really funny. I was like, that's a good thing, right? Are we on the right side? But, you know, you're going to kill 25%, 25 million people. That's a lot of people. So, yeah, we, we do got to stop you guys. But I also wondered about the people who already were into renewable fuels and embraced solar wind power and, and things of that nature. But they, they, they were strong-willed. So how would that work? Would it be reprogramming only the people who weren't? Or th That's where I was a little bit confused. Please, if you guys know, tell me down in the comment section below. They felt a lot less cheesy than some other superhero villains. And they just felt like they actually had real motivation. I really like the trend that DC is going in quality over quantity. The fact that this season is going to be basically half of pretty much every other DC show besides Black Lightning and Legends of Tomorrow. And that means that they're able to focus on individual episodes and there's pretty much no filler episodes in this series. And not saying that 23 episodes is necessarily a bad thing. I mean, just look at the first two seasons of Arrow and The Flash as well as Arrow season five and eight. They were just amazing. 23 slash 22 episodes can work really well when executed properly, but when your season doesn't have a good storyline and the writing is pretty terrible, then the filler episodes are really, really apparent and 
they just make you not want to watch the series. This is one of the first series in a while that have actually made me want to watch the next episode that at the end when they have the little trailer i'm just super excited like i i can't wait like literally i'm super excited to watch the next episode and the last time i felt that was probably the flash season one it just feels like especially in the flash season five where the trailers would hype it up and make it seem like the best episode ever but it really didn't pay off but star girl Stargirl paid off. In conclusion, I went into Stargirl with the assumption that it would be really similar to a lot of DC's recent work. It has the production value of a show like Titans, but with much, much better story. I really like exploring the concept of what would happen when the heroes and villains have kids and how that clashes together. I'm a little disappointed that they didn't go into more with Cindy, but maybe she will have a bigger part in the finale, who knows. But I think this show is definitely, from what I could see, one of my favorite shows of all time now. And I'm definitely giving it a 9 out of 10 for season 1. I think this show is a lot more relatable than some other superhero TV shows and a lot less cringy than other teenager focused shows. So yeah, let me know your opinions on Supergirl season 1 down in the comment section below. And it's been Cole. Peace. Thank you.